Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. Welcome to my allotment on a rainy and windy day for this week's vlog. So, the weather is atrocious and I can't believe it's past the midpoint in May and uh, this is where we're at. So, things are really delayed this year. If you're new to growing vegetables this season, uh, don't judge your timings for next year on this year because this is highly unusual, I'd say everything is so much later so this time last year i would have planted out my tomatoes my outdoor tomatoes my outdoor cucumbers my all my squash all my courgettes my sweet corn basically everything that's now <laughs> still being protected inside my little greenhouse it's not so much the cold anymore though obviously that's also a problem but the hail we've had almost every day and this torrential rain can also be a problem if your plot tends to flood a bit. Uh, but this wind whipping, whipping, whipping those tender leaves is just not great. And my poor sunflower, the one tall one that I've planted out, um, is, is like this. <laughs> so hopefully it'll stand, it's not broken, hopefully it'll stand up again. But basically it's leaning away from the prevailing winds today. So hopefully by tonight this this gusty weather will be over and I think possibly by the next weekend we'll have nice weather <laughs> like now I'm talking like 18 degrees and definitely time to plant everything out how about that maybe even this weekend if if it calms down if we are predicted more torrential rain and more hail uh, I might wait a bit with the squash but we are getting there. We are getting there slowly, but surely we are moving <laughs> forwards. <laughs> Though it doesn't feel like it at times. Anyway, uh, I am getting busier and busier with work, so finding the time for allotmenting is tricky. Though, I have done quite a few things. When I do sit down and write them down, they do actually end up being quite a, f quite a lot of them, so that's good. So I am, I am, you know, that's part of the reason why it's good to do this vlog for me. Part of it for you to know what I'm doing, but also for me myself to know that I've actually done something because it's it's easy to forget. You do so many little things. Anyway, right, let's get into it. My onions, they have been sitting in my greenhouse for a very long time. They were sown in end of February, I think. And I don't know why, but I just could not figure out where they were gonna go. So I have a big, big problem on my plot with Allium leaf miner. It is a fairly recent pest to arrive in the UK, I think 2002, something like that. Which is why onions used to be a super easy crop to grow here until they arrived. And they are spreading. I think the mild winter we had last year might have helped them along to become a real widespread problem last year. So it'd be interesting to see what happens this year with the colder winter we had and now this cold spring. So we'll see, it'll be interesting. However, I'm not taking any chances. So there's uh, Hallium leaf miner has two active periods. I'm not an expert, but it has two active periods, one in spring and one uh, late summer, I think, or autumn, early autumn. And basically they're, they're a fly. Uh, the, the, the fly isn't a problem per se, it's their larvae and their pupae that the larvae will mine into the, the allium and will basically kill the plant, stop it from producing whatever it is that you want to grow from it. If it, if it is a garlic, it will stop it swelling. If it's onion, it will rot. It will invite white rot into your onions. If it's leeks, they will start splitting and just not produce what you want. So basically, it's a it's a big problem. The pupae survives in the soil. So if you've had them there in the past, don't grow alliums there again, you know, because they will be there ready for when uh, it warms up and they need to go somewhere to eat, right? So don't do that. So the only control measures that I have taken is to only grow onions this year and garlic in beds that I have not grown onion and garlic in before. So because I made up a whole new bed area last year, it's been possible for me. Obviously, if you've cultivated your allotment or your garden for a long time and you get allium leaf manure, you know, it's a little bit of a problem. So you just have to see how you go. The other thing that you have to do then apart from growing in, in fresh 
ground is to cover with mesh to stop them arriving. So I'm not 100% sure how effective this is, how far they can travel in the soil and what you do if you've got the um, if you've composted the leaves for example how how well did they survive in your compost probably that depends on the heat of your composting system mine is hot enough to kill all weeds uh, even bindweed and mine is like 50% bindweed so I am fairly confident that it would kill off most of these pests as well but if you have a smaller compost it will be cooler meaning that they might survive better obviously then they will also be killed by frost so yeah it's a bit tricky it's a bit tricky we'll find out how how this year goes anyway that was a very long bit about allium leaf miner sorry about that <clears throat> it is uh, it was my biggest pest problem last year and i basically got no leaks so they are worse usually in the second um awakening which is when my leaks got hit so the first I noticed about it was on my garlic some of them quite a few more than I expected had white rot so the damage from the allium leaf miner can invite the white rot in so you know it is quite a common pest anyway quite a common problem with allium uh, is to have white rot but it is made worse if you have allium leaf miner as well so that was the first I noticed something was up and then on my shallots I noticed later in the summer that they were like splitting and behaving really weirdly I'd never seen it before basically they they split out of their outer sheets and just started growing like like this and then the the when the leaks when I saw them on the leaks I actually actually saw the pupae and then I knew what was wrong so I planted them out in a fresh bed and uh, before then I had to weed because that part of the new bed area is like bang on top of I don't know a massive mound of thistles <laughs> so they just keep coming back thistles are quite tricky perennial weeds because they have really long tap roots uh, but that are super brittle more brittle even than bindweed I would say and then they're prickly when you when you're weeding them so which is never nice but they will weaken over time you just have to keep uh, digging them out slowly and slowly so I made that bed last year so that's why it's still quite bad this year so I weeded there, planted in my, my my onions, I have like four or five varieties. The red onions are still growing in the greenhouse because I sowed them much later. I didn't have any seeds at first. And then I've covered the bed with fleece. So for the allium leaf miner you need to protect with mesh, right? But fleece works too. And I've chosen fleece now because it's still so cold. And with this wind particularly, young seedlings like that just after planting out for like seven to ten days they would benefit from a cover just to be protected a little bit and to establish a little bit faster so I've put the fleas on uh, and so far so good though obviously as soon as I put it on I realized I forgot to water them <laughs> so I had to take it off and water but uh, it's done now so yeah ah. <laughs> uh, I also planted out um, some of my herbs so this is again something that could have been planted out much sooner but I just didn't get around to it but and now I decided I was gonna just I'll just put them in anywhere I have a little bit of space right so I try to grow herbs once a month uh, so that when for example the coriander or the dill because they start to flower really really quickly especially maybe not this year because it's been so cold but a normal spring and especially in summer they they bolt really really readily so it's good to have like a succession sowing going on specifically with herbs parsley sticks around a bit better and you probably don't need as many plants or as many succession sowings of them uh, unless you eat loads of parsley of course but yes i put them in and um, i multi-sow them and with herbs it's good to to uh, with these kind of herbs it's good to sow three seeds and then expect two seedlings so if you have three thin them uh, and that will then help also not speed up the bolting so if you have too many growing at the same little space like if you sow in a pot and there's loads they will bolt quicker because they run out of water or nutrients quicker and then it forces the, the pushes the, the plant to flower quicker and you might remember uh, a few weeks ago I finally planted out my autumn sown sweet peas so they I have decided not to grow them up mesh this year because it was a nightmare to take down basically 
uh, sorry, mesh, I mean netting, right? Fruit netting. Uh, so I'm just letting them sort of fend for themselves and climb up this rusty old thing, right? But it's been so windy that uh, I've decided to tie them in. So I've created more work for myself. But you can basically just let them go. But if you want to pick sweet peas with those long straight stems to put in a vase, you sort of need to f hold the plant up. Because if it if it flops like that out in their natural habitat of, of or their natural way of growing, they will create those S stems instead because the the plant will sort of flop out and the flower stem will grow up. So it will become bent instead of the straight. So if you tie up the plant, it will produce those nice little uh, nodding straight stemmed uh, flowers that everyone wants. You know, with the really long stems as well. I also planted out the spring zone. So I them I just put here so I can see them from the greenhouse hopefully. It isn't full sun all day but it is enough I think and I just need to put in some sticks there for them to climb up. So when I dug out the base for this greenhouse we piled up the excess soil there on the hedge and I'm gonna plant it up with flowers I've decided this year. And um, yeah I've got one sunflower so far and I think that will probably be the only one because it's overhung a bit and these other sunflowers I have are like super tall. Um, and then uh, the sweet peas there and we'll see what else I put in. So I'm also growing spring onion this year. Again, you know, as every year, but uh, uh, they did not get affected by the leaf miner last year. So I'm gonna take a chance and grow them in beds that had uh, onions in them last year. Or, you know, it's not the same exact same spot, but it's the same bed, right? Um, and the reason for that is because for some reason, I don't know why, but I planted my lettuce really far apart this year. It's not a problem and I mean it will benefit, it definitely benefits the, the lettuce plant as in if they have more space they will be a healthier plant and they will live longer. Um, but it's not really necessary maybe for a lettuce plant because you're just picking it and um, it's gonna bolt anyway in, in summer. So I don't need it to survive for a long time because it won't anyway, I mean it, it will flower, right? Um, so I have space in between the lettuce plants and I did lose some to leather jackets, I think it is, that it just eats the stems and the whole plant just like um, Yeah, so if that happens to your lettuce, dig around in the soil where it was. It's not that it needs water. If all the other lettuce plants are looking lush, and especially now that it's been raining, it's definitely not uh, <laughs> that it needs water, it's because someone's nibbled the roots. And there's usually uh, a little wire worm or a leather leather jacket in there just uh, gorging itself and there's nothing you can do apart from I think treat with nematodes works but it's just on an allotment it's just too big an area so but if you have raised planters in your garden look into nematodes if you discover these kind of pests so strawberries um, this is the third year for my strawberry bed and it's finally looking like it's gonna do something, right? Which is a shame because next year I need to rejuvenate it. Some of the plants you can tell are really old and like woody and you know become like uh, become a dead center, right? So definitely it's time next year to rejuvenate it. But anyway, the spring last year was so dry, they and I just don't have water, right? So they really suffered and did not produce much at all last year. So I was very disappointed. I was this close to ripping it out in winter, right? Anyway, it's come into zone now with loads of flowers, loads of beginning of fruit. Uh, as long as we don't have a frost, I think they should be okay. And I've weeded it. <laughs> it was torrential rain, so I didn't film, but I weeded it. And there was quite a lot of bindweed, of course, as, I, as everywhere. And I mulched it. So it's looking much better now. The strawberry in the planter has actually got strawberries on it. So because it's in, you know, protected by the greenhouse, it's obviously much further ahead. The thing I need to remember is to water it, of course. Uh, and those plants in there, they're, they're runners, they're really young. So I probably could have snipped those flowers off and maybe let the plant establish a bit more. But because it's in a basket, I don't really care, right? I don't know if I'm gonna keep them in there for next year. You see what I mean? And I also planted out my, my round tub with strawberries. Like this was a couple of months ago. And uh, that's really filling out now. I had to replace a few of the runners that were planted in there because they died in some of the frosts that we had. 
I don't know if it was water pooled on them and that froze uh, because they'd been outside since uh, February anyway um, but somehow for some reason they died when they were planted up so I might have uh, just watered before we had a frost uh, and that might have killed them so anyway I've replaced some of them but it's really looking lush now and uh, we'll see if we get some flowers there and then I had a few spares that I just planted out in the mound here next to the greenhouse and we'll see we'll see what they do I mean they're like little runts so they might not do anything but the thing about strawberries, you know, the way they grow, send out uh, rhizosomes and uh, runners, sorry, is quite like invasive, especially when it comes to wild strawberries. So that's alpine strawberries or wild strawberries is something I grew up in in Sweden with, grew up with in Sweden. So they grow along the they grow along the roads. I mean that sounds awful, but there's <laughs> in the countryside where there's barely any traffic, you can pick them along the road, for example, in the ditches, because they, you know, they manage the grass in the ditches, so it's perfect, like, semi-short grass, so the sun gets down to the wild strawberries, and uh, so they're happy there. If they're super ripe, they are very tasty, and they taste not that similar to strawberries, really. It's, like, cultivated strawberries are much, much sweeter, as well as being bigger. But I, you know, it tastes like childhood to me, so I love growing them. So I found, actually found uh, a group of them growing in a tiny little pocket of dirt on top of a wall in Liverpool when I lived there. Uh, so I just, one drunken night, just dug them out of the wall and carried them home and planted them up in a pot. So, so I've had them since then, planted them in my garden, and then they went berserk, like they were just... Wow, it just covered everything so they were used to I guess living up north and down here is much nicer they loved it and then we dug out the garden and a lot of that soil ended up on the flower mound right so they obviously came with and they are everywhere they're going insane um yeah so we might also have some wild strawberries this year we'll see I mean the birds love them too so but I think they're they're a great ground cover for me and they have lots of flowers that the pollinators like so what's not to love about them Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was still recording. While I have your attention though, if you enjoy this video or you find it useful, consider giving it a thumbs up because then it tells me that I'm doing something right or a thumbs down if you don't like it and then I'll change things up. Let's get back to the video and more importantly, my uh, Bakewell tart. <laughs> so I've sown almost all my flowers that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna grow all, that I'm gonna grow from seed in the greenhouse right I still have to direct so all the flowers are for outside but it's just been so wet I'm gonna wait until it's uh, not so wet uh, because I don't want it to rot right but yes I've grown almost all my seeds now in the greenhouse and they needed pricking out so the ones I've done now for that have finally gone into their little modules are the lupins the straw flowers the sweet mustards the violas uh, the flocks and then I've also potted on some other ones that I sowed in modules which are the nasturtiums a few of them have come up still waiting for a few others um, my hollyhocks and my zinnias right so they're all coming they're all coming the cosmos need to be pinched out uh, all the marigolds are ready to go but you know I, I'm not I'm not ready yet to plant them up because the tomatoes aren't ready yet so you know we're, we're they're stacking up the flowers are stacking up but there's a lot of flowers like the oxide daisies uh, all those things can be planted out the calendula you know I just need a break in the weather and then it's all go 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 and then we can get get going so most of the flowers are actually sitting outside in this weather in their modules and just because then I don't have to water them um, just make sure that if you do put all your pots and everything outside in this kind of weather because they're short right they're fine in the wind uh, and the module is heavy enough that it's not going to blow away um, but make sure that if you do that make sure they don't end up sitting in water because that will rot them right so they have to be with somewhere where it's draining away so something that's not outside I don't know if you can see that well there's some up there are my tall sunflowers so I took them outside I left them outside for a day and then 
it's just like it, the, the sky just opened like and and then it started hailing and I just rushed out took them all inside the greenhouse and they were all like flopping like um, and that's just not good with some flowers so I've grown them for too long it's sort of tricky right so I'm not great with this because timing is key with some flowers if you're gonna grow them in pots and you don't want to stake them for the rest of their lives you need to plant them out when they're still this tall if they go that in that shooting phase which mine have done um, and they're still in the greenhouse completely protected there's no wind in here they grow much faster up instead of concentrating on stability right so if they're growing outside in that growing phase then they know what the elements are doing where they are so they prepare they prepare the roots they prepare the thickness of the stem before they start growing up and i refuse to stake my sunflowers partly because i don't have any spare bamboo and it just ends up snapping anyway it's just they need to they need to fend for themselves basically so um they are all flopping and when they flop so this was in the evening if I just let them flop like that, heavy with the rain, and then the next day arrived with the sun, they would have started growing like that. So instead of growing up, they would have grown in in an S, right? So that would have been impossible to plant out. They would have been fine. They would have been, you know, they want to live, so they just grow on. And uh, <laughs> it, it would probably have worked, right? But it would have been a nightmare to plant out, because I want to plant them deep. Uh, I want to have them straight up so that they can get as tall as possible um, so that was no good so I had to like prop them up while they were still flopping so that the head was facing up towards the sky so it meant that they weren't gonna do that S thing where they where the top seeks the sky right so it did work thank god because I was so sad that all my sunflowers again have failed but we're still okay, though I haven't planted them out yet, so um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how they do. I want really tall sunflowers this year. <sighs> I mean, I'm gonna sow some direct as well, and they'll probably end up being taller anyway, so. But yeah, you know, there we go. Um, I did grow some dwarfs as well, two footers, and um, I thought, what a great idea, I'll put them in one of my skip finds, my one of my planters that I found, right? And thanks for the tip uh, about lining those zinc planters with some um, compost bags, right? So that, because apparently they can get really hot and then it evaporates really quickly. I'm not so sure what the plastic does, if that doesn't make it worse, but I've tried it. Uh, I didn't line the bottom because I wanted to drain properly. So I planted one of them up in front of the little greenhouse. And I had another lot of sunflowers that I had marked up as dwarf, but when I actually looked at the packet, it said five foot <laughs> rather than two or three foot. So they're not actually dwarf, though they're not giants, right? So, but I have a row of the five footers at the back, a row of the two footers in the middle, and then around the front is some trailing lobelia. So hopefully that'll end up being quite pretty, um, though it could look absolutely garish because I think the sunflowers are like reddish uh, burnt kind of oranges and the lobelia is like a, a, a color mix um, you know the reds the pinks the whites the, um, so it might be a little bit weird though it should be fine because the lobelia is so low and then the sunflowers will be taller so we'll see I mean it's an allotment so everything's allowed um, and everything looks cute because it's an allotment isn't it <laughs> or maybe that's just my opinion so we're in this phase now where I am slowly, 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 as quickly as possible, emptying the greenhouse of all the seedlings. So mainly in here now are just flower seeds, basically. Um, there's the edible lupins and a few artichokes that are still, I'm still waiting to grow a bit bigger before I plant them out. Um, but yeah, we're slowly getting there to the point where I will empty this whole space and make plants for my tomatoes. So I think in here is gonna be A, tomatoes, and then B, maybe some climbers. So it could be the lufa, it could be the cucumbers, it could be the achocha. I need to make space for the tomatillos. And then I have aubergines, melons, and chilies and peppers, right? And I have two greenhouses to split them up between. 
So I'm gonna try to squeeze in as much as possible, as well as basil, as well as marigolds, and we'll see how we get. So that will probably be in the next vlog. Let's hope so. Let's hope it warms up, and I'll see you then.